So here we've got our silicone mold, right? We've done everything we need to do. The rubber is cured and we can pull the rubber band off, right? The silicone, however, is bonded to the glass and you could use acrylic or polycarbonate plates instead of glass. But when you have glass, one thing you want to be aware of is you're not just going to pull straight apart. That's going to put a lot of force on your hands. It's going to give a high likelihood that the glass breaks. And if the glass breaks, you have rubber and something sharp you have a high chance of cutting yourself as well as cutting the rubber. So what works best is actually if you just rotate your glass plate just slightly and the whole thing will peel off. So then we'll do this again from the side so you can see what's happening. So I'm just applying torque and it breaks loose. So once you have your two glass plates off, it's pretty easy to remove your part. Let's just line it up and then apply pressure. And you'll notice that the sort of clear is very, very transparent. There's no air bubbles, there's no signs of contamination. And when you look at it from the long side, the thick side, you understand why it's sort of clear and not just clear, right? That's why they came up with the name. Uh, but it's a it's a 37A shore hardness and it works really well. Um, the only thing I would do at this point is just trim off any of the remaining uh, dangling bits, and you can do that with either scissors or an exacto. I found with silicone, what works best is scissors, just because it gives you a better way to approach what you're trying to do. It gives you a uniform cut. If you don't have a receiving surface to stab or puncture through, um, it's, it's a little tricky to get that uniform, so the scissors getting off the extra debris is more than enough. And then we'll switch to a specific type of cutter to demold our part. So this part isn't necessary, but I have extra bubbles and debris inside the part. And all of this rubber is excess, so it just gets in the way of me working with it. So I'm just going to trim that off. So I don't have as much mold material in the way while I'm working. And I'm just trimming with a kitchen knife. And it's important to just do a single pull stroke and then line up the kitchen knife in the same location each time. And so as you do that, you'll get this fine, clean separation, right? Whereas you pull it, you can see that line. And then it's really about just seating your blade in to that line again and rocking it back and forth with slow applied pressure. And this should be a very sharp knife, like sashimi grade. And then you'll get a pretty clean line. And then from there, anytime you're going to rotate it or turn it, you don't have to worry about excessive debris. And so once you get to this point, you can switch back to your scissors and trim your excess.